Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. Family Church, welcome back. We are in a series called Improving Your Serve. Pastor Josh and I are in sunny Scottsdale, Arizona today. So we decided to go ahead and video record our message, but we have a lot of great information for you today. We have some interactive times today. We have a giveaway today, and we have a spiritual gifts test available for every single one of you. As we begin, we wanna tell you this, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. That's kind of one of the ideas behind what we're talking about is that each and every one of us has been given a gift from God and that gift is what makes you great. So today, part of this message series is that you would identify what your spiritual gift is. What did God place within you? So we want to go ahead and look at Romans 12, six through eight. And it says this, having then gifts differing according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophesying, prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith or ministry. Let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching. If I catch y'all talking during this sermon, one more time, I'm sending y'all to the office. Last warning, we're done. He who exhorts in exhorting. He who gives with liberality, and he who leads with diligence, and he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Listen to this one. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 8 through 10, and then 28 through 30. It says, For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Watch verse 28. And God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then after gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? No, they do not all, right? It's all different parts of the body and spiritual gifts. Our last passage, because we're trying to list out all of the spiritual gifts towards us. Ephesians 4.11 is the last passage that gives us a list of spiritual gifts. And it says this, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. If we go back and look at that list, it gives us all of the um, gifts of the spirit, prophecy, teaching, exhortation, giving, leadership, mercy, wisdom, knowledge, healings, miracles, discerning of spirits, did I say apostles? Apostles, administrations, evangelists, and pastors. These are our list of spiritual gifts that when you take the test today, you will find out where you are in that list. Serving gifts are what we're gonna look at today. Because we're talking about improving your serve, we wanna pull out the gifts that are specifically towards serving and how do we do that in a practical way. The first one we wanna look at is gifts of administration. The Greek word for the spiritual gift of administration is kubernesis. Now it's gonna come on the screen or down here or up here because it's kind of a funny word to see in the Greek. And this is a unique term that refers to a shipmaster or a captain. The one who is in charge, the one who is running the ship. It literally means the one who is steering or rules or governs. He's the leader of that ship. He's administering the ship. It carries the idea of someone who guides 
and directs a group of people towards a goal or destination. The person who's administering, we're, we're taking a group of people and we're steering them, we're guiding them in a common goal or purpose. And with the gift of the Holy Spirit enabling certain Christians to organize, direct, and implement plans to lead others in various ministries in the church. The gift of administration is actually one of my uh, top three spiritual gifts. Again, my pastoring was kind of low, but I do have a way of steering a group of people towards where we're going to go and constantly putting that vision in front of them. This gift is closely related to the gift of leadership, but it's more goal oriented or task oriented than that. Um, and it's concentrated on details and organization. I love that, Pastor Mike. Next gift that we're going to look at is the gift of mercy. Now, all Christians are called to be merciful because God has been merciful to us. The Greek word for the spiritual gift of mercy is, now this one has three, four vowels and one consonant, so forgive me. El eh eh o. El eh o. El eh o. Aloha. <laughs> From Arizona. <laughs> it means to be patient and compassionate to those who are suffering or those who are afflicted. The con this concern is not only physical needs, but it also could be meeting the spiritual needs of those who are hurting. This is all covered underneath the gift of mercy. Those people who have this gift, they have great empathy for others who are going through trials and sufferings. They're the person when somebody's goldfish dies at work and they're distraught about it, they're not, they're not making fun of them. They're like, I'm sorry about Nemo. Hopefully he's in a better place. That's how you know you have the gift of mercy when you're reaching out to people who others might be looking down on in this moment. Thought their fish came alive because it started swimming as the swirl was yeah. going down, but it was not. <laughs> that fish did. Let it go, honey. Bye, we can buy you another one. People who also have this gift of mercy are definitely able to come along alongside people over extended periods of time and see them through this healing process. These people are truly and literally the hands and of God and the feet of God to people who are afflicted. The Holy Spirit gives the gift of spiritual mercy to summon the church to love and assist those who are suffering and walk with them until the Lord allows this burden to be lifted off of their heart. This gift of mercy is founded in God's mercy towards us as sinners and is consistently expressed with measurable compassion. Now watch this. People with this gift are able to weep with those who weep. We see that in Romans chapter 12, verse 15. So ask yourself, are you empathetic? When somebody is going through something, do you feel disconnected from their emotions, looking from the outside, or do you feel like you're connected with that person in that moment? That'll show you if you have that gift. Watch this, Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, that you're able to bear one another's burdens. When somebody else is burdened around you, are you able to help them with that load? People with this gift of mercy, they are sensitive to the feelings and circumstances of others and can quickly discern when somebody isn't doing well. They are typically good listeners and they feel the need to be there for others, even sometimes before meeting their own needs. Yeah, these would be like nurses, caregivers, mm -hmm. counselors, teachers, so someone in that field that is a hands-on person when someone's going through something in their life. The next gift we want to look at is the gift of leadership. The spiritual gift of leadership is closely related, like we said, to the gift of administration. And it's also interestingly connected to pastoring and shepherding, right? So it's kind of funny where leadership lies. It's connected to administration, connected to pastoring, but it's kind of unique in and of itself. The Greek word for leadership here is proisteme, proisteme. And this word means to lead, to assist, to protect, and to care for others. The spiritual gift of leadership found in Romans 12, 8 is sandwiched between the gift of giving and the gift of mercy. Wow. It's placed there intentionally to show that this gift is associated with caring for others. And it's also in connection again with pastoring or shepherding. 
but it is different. What makes it different from the gift of administration, whereas administration is more task oriented, leadership is people oriented. It's people over task, where administration sometimes can be task over people. Um, and that's, that's kind of very important in leadership. If you're the kind of leader where you're all about tasks, you might actually be a better administrator than you are leader. Uh, we talk about this on staff all the time that we lead from the front. We don't lead from the back. We're not telling people where to go. We're showing people where to go, yeah. right? Where to come with us. And this is not to say that those gifts administration don't care for people. They, they can, of course they do. But those with the spiritual gift of leadership focus on people and the relationship with people more closely than that of an administrator. That's why like administrators in hospitals or big businesses, they may not be at everybody's party Correct. and being everybody's friend. Whereas like a leader of a department wants to be around everybody all the time. The word paristeme is connected to caring for people in other passages as well. If you want to go back and look these up, 1 Thessalonians 5.12, it says, Paul says, respect those who labor among you and over, paristeme, over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly. The labor and works of those who are leading the believers in Thessalonica was that of like a tireless and caring, it was like, they were tirelessly in caring for their souls. And Paul also connected leadership to caring for people when he asked in 1 Timothy 3, 5, if someone does not know how to manage, manage proistemi, his own household, how will he care for God's church? The Holy Spirit gives the spiritual gift of leadership to summon the church to care for God's people and to lead them in a deeper relationship with Christ. They base their success on how well they help others succeed and grow. Okay, leadership isn't as, you can't determine success as a leader how far you go. Success as a leader is determined by how far those who you lead go, right? right? You don't want to be the cap, the lid to those that you're leading. You want to lead people to a place that they one day supersede and excel past you, all right? Um, a leader can accomplish many different tasks and objectives as they lead, but they always lead relationally with a deep concern for the well-being of others. They are visionaries. They got vision way out there. Um, and they're less concerned about the mundane details and tasks. That would be more on the administration side. All right. Um, they will go to great lengths to protect those under their care and they are well equipped to lead through crisis situations. It's awesome. Next gift we're going to look at is the gift of service. So the spiritual gift of service or ministering to other people, it covers a wide range of activities in its application. And there are two Greek words for this gift. The first one is found in Romans chapter 12, verse 7. Pastor Mike, I didn't even go try this one. Diakonia. <laughs> what he said. The basic meaning of this word is actually to wait tables, but it is often most translated in the Bible as ministry. If you've ever had a good waiter, you know how they make you feel. They actually make you feel like you want to give more to them. So if you have the gift more of- More than 20%? Serve, pastor, sometimes even 20 and a half percent hey! when they're good, when they're real good. This gift of serving actually might make others want to get involved in serving as well. And this word is most often, like I said, translated as ministry. It refers to any act of service done in genuine love for the edification or building up of the community. The word antilepsis is translated helping and is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. It actually has a similar meaning, which is to help or aid in love. That's a big point. To help or aid in love within the community. The Holy Spirit endows some believers with this gift to fill the many gaps of ministry and to meet the needs of the church as it fulfills the Great Commission. Think of it as, okay, if Pastor Mike is going out and he's, he's preaching and he's on the stage, he, he has a whole team of people that are helping him to pull that off. When I'm upstairs with the youth group, I'm not able to pull it off by myself. There's teams of people that serve with us every weekend that helps us to pull off the Great Commission. The goal of this gift is to energize the church and to free up others to use their gifts to the fullest. 
The result is the continued building up of the church and the added ability to see beyond your own needs and reach out into the community. We see people with this gift in passages like Acts chapter 6 and 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verses 15 through 16 and many others as well. Those with this gift of service are committed to the spread of the gospel. They always serve in ways that benefit others with different gifts and ministries that are more public. They always have a heart that is devoted to Jesus and a desire to follow his command. Those with this gift do not seek recognition or position in the spotlight. They just love to help out. They are content with serving in the background, knowing their contribution will bless the church and display the love of Christ to the world and bring glory to God. Yeah. So like people can serve without actually having the gift of serving. Yes. When someone has the gift of serving, it will never be about them. Yeah. It will never be about their serving. And after all I've done for you, like those kind of things don't happen. This person wants to be in the background. They do not want to be in the spotlight, but their heart is whatever I can do to advance the kingdom of yeah. uh, agenda. Sign me up for that. Yeah. These are the type of people where serving is not a means to an end. Serving is an end in of itself. It's I served, I don't need anything in return. The fact that I was able to serve, that was good enough for me. Yeah, absolutely. The next gift that we wanna talk about is the gift of giving. The Greek word for the spiritual gift for giving is met ad idome. Um, that one's a really hard one to say, but it'll come up on the screen either here or here. It simply means to impart or to give. However, this word is accompanied in Romans 12, 8 by another descriptive word, haplatos, haplates. Uh, and this word tells us much more about the kind of giving that is associated with the gift of giving, right? So you can be a giver, but not have the gift of giving. You could put offering in the plate each week, but not have the gift of giving. If you have the gift of giving, you're the one that goes out of your way to find any special project that's happening and you want to advance that. So watch this. This word haplotes uh, means sincerely, generously, and without pretense or hypocrisy. That means that you're giving without any strings attached. Whereas a lot of us, we give a gift waiting for the person to give a gift back. Yeah. The person who has the gift of giving, they're like, I have, I'm blessed and I've been created to bless others. And the Holy Spirit imparts this gift to some in the church to meet the various needs of the church and its ministries, missionaries, or the people who have not been provided for fully themselves. Also projects, things that are happening that are special that go above and beyond just normal giving. They have that gift to push the kingdom agenda forward. The goal is to encourage and to provide giving all credit to God as the provider. Those with this gift love to share with others the, and the overflow blessings that God has given to them. A lot of times people who have the gift of giving um, are also very hospitable. Mm -hmm. they, they have people over their house a lot. Uh, you'll, you'll see them, they have to stop. If there's a homeless person or someone's asking for money during Christmas time, this person, they just have to reach in their pocket and put something in. They are typically very hospitable. They seek out ways and opportunities to help out others. They're also excited about stewardship and they will adjust their lifestyle in order to give more and spread the gospel for those who are in care and those who are needy. They are grateful when someone shares a need with them so that they can participate in meeting that need. And they're always, always joyful when they can meet the need of others. Yeah, you're going to see in not only this gift, but a lot of the gifts, a lot of the gifts that we see spiritually are about the ability to put others in front of yourself, to not be so focused on your needs and what you want and what you want to get out of something that you're just focused on serving others the same way that we see that Christ serves us. So next one we have is the gift of extortion. Extortion? Yeah, the gift of extortion. So um, God has blessed me with the spiritual gift of extortion. Um, last week in church, one of the kids in children's ministry had their parents' brand new AirPods, $150. I was able to steal it from them. 
Um, one of our church members left their house keys. I was actually able to rob them. Um, I got a new phone today. Praise God. Somebody came into the church for prayer, forgot to lock their uh, purse up. I got a brand new wallet and I was able actually to steal hazelnut from our church cafe. So I've been gifted with that uh, spiritual gift. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, did he get it right? Is it extortion? How about, how about you shout out from your seat right now? What is it? Exhortation. Oh, I was just playing. I didn't actually, t- I'm going to head out. Bye. Whew. What is exhortation? The gift of exhortation. The spiritual gift of exhortation is often called the gift of encouragement. 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 The Greek word for this gift is parakaleo. It means to beseech, exhort, call upon, to encourage, and to strengthen. Those that strengthen those who are around them. The primary means of exhortation is to remind the hearer of the powerful and amazing work of God in Christ, particularly in regard to the saving work of Jesus and the atonement. The Spirit of God gives this gift to people in the church to strengthen and encourage those who are wavering in their faith. I'm sure many of us have felt this way or know someone that feels that they're in a spot where it's like, I can't go another day like this. I'm holding on for dear life. This is where people with this gift of exhortation come in to encourage them, to help them to be strengthened and to keep them moving forward. When God gives this this gift to people to strengthen and encourage, it's very obvious when you've come into contact with somebody who has that gift. Those with this gift of exhortation can uplift and can motivate as well as challenge and rebuke them in order to foster spiritual growth and action. So there's going to be times when people are saying things that aren't true about themselves, believing things that are putting them down in their own mind. Somebody with this gift of encouragement is not only going to tell them the truth, but they're also going to tell them, don't believe those lies about yourself. Yeah, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Oh my God. Believe in a lie. <laughs> They were not so hard. Rebu- it's just like, it's what do you rebuke? Like when you burn food, do you rebuke your oven? Absolutely. Like no, you your spouse for burning food. <laughs> Ladies, just want you to know. Sorry, Pastor. But those with this gift of exhortation will uplift, motivate, and the goal of the encourage encourager is to see everyone in the church continually building up the body of Christ and glorifying God. I got one funny story about this. When I used to start doing offering at the church, maybe some of you guys remember when I had the nice peanut head and I was very shy and quiet. When I would do offering so badly, this lady would come up to me and be like, I want you to know that really blessed me. In my head, I was like, you're lying. I did so bad. How did that bless you? The only way it could bless you is that it made you feel better about yourself. But this lady legitimately had this spiritual gift where she would always, always, always encourage me, even when I wasn't doing the best. And it did help me and motivate me to keep moving forward, even though I was making some mistakes at that time. Yeah, so sometimes when the person who's sitting in the auditorium and they want to say, so good, so good, (laughs) while you're preaching, they might have the gift of encouragement. Pastor John Mark uh, actually has the gift of encouragement. He's very high in that. Uh, He's always looking for ways to encourage people and tell them how great they are and what they're doing. So this list that we gave you today is... The the spiritual gifts associated to serving. So if you have a serving gift, then we touched on something that is automatically and already happening in your life, but maybe now you can see it and distinguish it a little bit differently. On your seat, there should be a card or a piece of paper that has the information on how you can access the spiritual gifts test. Uh, Family Church has, has a website that you can log into, put your name, put your information so that we can actually categorize you and find out what your spiritual gift is. It'll file it with us, but it will also email you that information so that you can find what your spiritual gift is. Now, it is our hope that every single person that finds what their spiritual gifts are, you would use them in the local church to advance the kingdom of God, but it will help in your everyday life. It'll help at your job. It'll help at your home, knowing what God has placed within you to use in the local church. Let's pray today. 
Father, we come to you today in Jesus' name, and Lord, we thank you for this message that we just got to hear. Lord, I pray that everyone in this room or watching online, that as we're seeing what spiritual gifts we have, that we would be reminded that our giftings are not just for us, but for those that are around us. Lord, we thank you for these things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, now let's hear from Pastor John Mark about fam foundations and how we can get more involved in serving. We love you guys. If you don't already know this, everyone in this room is gifted, all right? So you may have grown up in a household where your parents may have told you you were dumb or you you can't do anything right or whatever. I want to tell you and correct that for you because my spiritual gifts is is, is exhortation is that you are gifted. God wants you to use your gifts so you can develop into the person he's created you to be. You have purpose. God has created you for a special purpose. And this is why we talk about Fan Foundations. Fan Foundations is a place where you can begin to discover your purpose here in the local church, but not only here in the local church, but use your gifts in, every, in your everyday life. I find myself using my gift of exhortation pretty much at Panera Bread and Walmart, all over the place. You can do it. I had one girl, she came in for an interview at Panera Bread one time, and I was like, you know what? You're going to do great. God, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna achieve that, that goal that you have of getting this job. And she's like, I don't know if I can. I said, yes, you can. Yes, you can. She got the job, <laughs> of course. Not because of me, but I was allowed to use my gift, and she was able to step into her purpose because I used my gift. And that's what happens when you decide to use your gift here at Family Church and the world around you. We have some time right now. If you guys would take out that paper that you got and use your phone, if you have a phone, an iPhone, an Android, uh, pull out your camera and highlight that right there, and it'll take you directly to that website so you can take your spiritual gifts. You can take them right here in the seat if you want to, or you can wait till you get home. Also, you can go to our website at familychurchny.com. I'm going to pull that website up right now. And if you scroll up, you can't really see it. If you scroll up, you'll see improve your serve by using your gifts. What gifts has God given you? Click here. So click on that click here button so that you'll be able to take that spiritual gifts assessment. The purpose of Fan Foundations to get involved here at Family Church, not only to get here involved here at Family Church, but exponentially grow your gift. Your gift is like a muscle. You must exercise it. You must exercise your gift. You must work out that gift that you have inside of you. Serving here at the local church has exponentially transformed my life. I started serving at 16 here at Family Church. And because of my service and being under Pastor Mike, he was able to help me develop my gifts, help me uh, develop my ability so that I'm able to do what I'm able to do right now here at Family Church. And I encourage you that wherever you're at in your life, take the next step. Take the next step of faith with God. There's so many gifted people that would transform the world around us in this, in this church. If you would just step out today, use your gift. Begin to step out. God will do some amazing things in your life that you never thought. He will take you places that you never thought. Your gift will make room for you and bring you in front of great men. Use your gift today. Let's pray. God, we are so grateful that you've given us gifts and talents and abilities to use in the world around us. Help us to discover our purpose so that we can be effective in our workplace, that we can be effective at home and be effective in the local church. Bless each and every person at the sound of my voice. I think that they are the head and not the tail, above only and never beneath, that whatever they set their hands to will prosper in the name of Jesus, that those gifts will begin to grow. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to familychurchny.com or email us at team at familychurchny.com to get started today.